Well, I guess um, like, what are the first thing you think of? I don't know. Like when, it, or like even when somebody was like, oh, what is cross country like at Mansfield? Do you like? Are there any things that stick out in particular, like right uh, off the bat? What I remember is that it was really a personal challenge. Sure. Because we really didn't have a team organized well, so it was what you did personally. When I uh, came on the team, I was I was not on the team. I came to Mansfield and I'd go out and run every day, and and uh, certain guys that were quote part of the team and the coach, said, why don't you come on the team? I said, well. I will, as long as it's fun. When you spell fun backwards, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, are there still like a lot of routes like around here that you or hills that you remember running? Oh yeah, or, like, yeah. yeah. Going out to the golf course and running up the Max and Marathon, going up the hill here, and then of course uh, uh, there were a lot of 10ks and 5ks and 15, 20ks, different areas. But uh, I devoted my time basically training for the team. Running against Lock Haven, Bloomsburg, Slippery Rock, uh, you know, those schools are basically where we ran. And you said one of the championships you had to drive yourself, the coach couldn't make it? Uh, well, the coach wasn't going to go, and uh, so I went to the championship. I drove down myself, and that's, and, uh, that's the way it goes. And I don't think you even realize that, at least according to the online results, like you ended up being all conference, so you're Mansfield's like, first all conference cross country runner. And I guess you didn't even know that. I didn't know time. that until you uh, emailed me about uh, a week or so ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you found out roughly 50 years later that you were an all-conference runner. Yeah, I never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, is there anything like in particular that you would want to like share with either future or current runners? Or? Uh, basically, with, uh, I, I really am an adherent of you're capable of way more than you give yourself credit for. And we, you're taught at a very really early age if something's uncomfortable or you can't, you don't know, feel good, you quit. But you have to keep going beyond that. I mean, uh, life is what happens when you're planning everything else. And you have to keep the, the attitude that no matter what happens, you're going to get back on your feet and keep going. Uh, don't let the shadow of the past fall in front of you. Just keep going. And uh, it's just basic little tenets that I've kept in my mind all my life. and undeveloped as I got older and uh, I don't know if wiser but that'd be someone else's decision to make so <laughs> um I don't know any of you guys think of anything you'd like to ask I'd be about happy to answer here? anything uh, how many times did you qualify for Boston uh I qualified uh, I tried to qualify three times and qualified each time yeah yeah I ran Boston three times and uh it's just nice when you run across the Wellesley campus and all the girls are patting you on the butt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of your favorite road races then? Um, just also, I mean, in addition to Boston. Uh, my favorite, quite frankly, was the God's Country Marathon. It starts at Gilton and goes to Countersport. And uh, it's probably one of the more difficult, but again, it's a matter of challenging yourself and pacing yourself. And I find that a lot of times, runners, especially when you're younger, you tend to go out too fast, you don't know how to pace yourself, and uh, you burn out in the first half of the race and you're just struggling the, the last half. So it's a matter of pacing. Uh, don't always go in the lead at the beginning. You know, feel things out, see what's going on. It's kind of like a, a boxer or a wrestler. You kind of feel your opponent out in the early part and then see what your capabilities are and uh, go beyond that. It, uh, Again, you're capable of way more than you give yourself credit for. And uh, again, don't let people tell you you can't do it. You gotta almost be defiant. Uh, when people say you can't do this, you can't do that, that is a challenge. You, you say, okay, we'll see. Uh, when I was in high school, I was told that wasn't college material. Oh yeah, well, let's see, you know. So I didn't go to college till four years after I was out of high school. Okay. So it, it's a matter of constantly you don't have problems, you have challenges. You know, the problem's just not part of the vocabulary. It's a challenge, take it, go with it. And uh, you never come in last, you never lose, you just come in next, you know? Uh, some people say well, they always wanna be first, wanna be first. You can't always be first, but you can still say, well, I came in next, mm -hmm. easy. Keep a positive attitude. You, you told me the story earlier about um 
how you started running. Could you share that with everybody? <laughs> I was on a hayride, and I was about, uh, oh, maybe 12 years old. We were back in the boonies someplace, and the, the trailer got a flat tire on it, and uh, they had to unhook the tractor, and they drove the tractor to a farm about six miles away, and whatever uh, thing I did to be bereft of my senses, I started running after the tractor, and when the tractor pulled in the driveway, I was behind them. And I found that I, I could run and I enjoyed it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, running is, to me, is meditative. Uh, I don't run anymore, not because I don't want to. Uh, I've got two artificial knees and two artificial hips, and uh, I uh, try to keep myself busy and uh, do a lot of walking, hiking, and that sort of thing, because the impact is not good. That's, you can't do that. So you said you, you coached for... 30 years well, over 30 years and so the time from when you first started running here at Mansfield to the time that you stopped coaching like, what kind of changes did you think were like some of the most drastic in that time as far as well, running okay well being a dinosaur and you know uh, <laughs> looking at my my past uh, I, I found in my opinion which may be absolutely wrong that I found more and more young people weren't willing to do the work required for distance running they wanted to be a sprinter or maybe run a 400 at the max an 800 which is grueling to them but to have them uh, train for a uh, 1600 or a 3200 or a three and a half mile cross country run they just didn't want to do that it uh, I think it's happening in all of our schools at least in our area that you don't see cross country you get very few runners that come out for it uh, it's it's a matter of a work ethic and a personal focus of what you want to do and if you don't have that I always told the kids, I can't motivate you. Only you can motivate you. I can't do it. And uh, it's like changing people's mind. You can't change somebody's mind. They change their mind. If they've got a bad attitude, then they're the ones that have to change it. You can do all the cajoling and try uh, counseling you want to, but if they don't want to change their mind, they're not going to change. That's an opinion. <laughs> like a journal of your runs while you were I used to. I kept a journal for quite a few years. Uh, uh, so uh, now I've slowed my writing down because I walk. But uh, <laughs> 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 my, my wife, uh, you saw, some of you probably saw the book. She put that together. She saved the clippings and the pictures and things and put them together and surprised me with that. And uh, I, I want to say that you know, I'd go to these races and she always supported me. And it was travel for the family and uh, I'd come home from work, go for a 10-mile run. And there were things that had to be done, I realized that, but she was very tolerant of my obsession and uh, <laughs> it worked out. Uh, we met here at Mansfield, I like to tell you this, uh, we met at Mansfield in a literature class. The literature class was called the Romantic Movement. And <laughs> Dr. Glim, Dr. Glim was the teacher, we both got A's. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we've been married uh, 47 half years. That's great. So and we have two children, and uh, I never pushed them to be runners, but they did participate in track, and that's fine. You know, if you if you lose, you learn to be humble, and uh, if you win, you, you learn to be generous. It was fun. I, uh, Mansfield did a lot for me. It, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to go into my background. That's not necessary, but. Uh, uh, Mansfield helped me look forward to the just unlimited possibilities of things I could do. What were some of your other favorite memories of being at Mansfield? My favorite memories, quite frankly, was uh, number one, meeting my wife. She was working in the cafeteria. When I'd go through, she wouldn't look at me, so I knew she liked me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, the participation in the track and the Cross country, and I, I worked hard at my classes. I was four years older than most of the students, and had a focus on what I wanted to do. And was one of those real nasty dorm counselors, and uh, had to do my job. But uh, it, it was it was good. It, it's wrap it all together and learn to associate and uh, comprehend and be compassionate, work with other people. So you were like an RA on campus. I was. Okay. They called me the lieutenant. <laughs> Well, of course, the first one was Oak Hall. They tore that down. And then I was in, I think it's Maple. 
Okay, yeah. They, I don't know if it's still... Uh, yeah, Maple's still there. Maple's still there, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I have a uh, dean. Uh, of course, it would be President Kelter to most people, but he was a dean. And then there was uh, uh, Dean Kohler, you know, people that I remember, of course, are the uh, past now. Did you have a favorite running route? Did you I, have what, sir? Did you have a favorite running route? When I first arrived here, I was handed a sheet of paper that had been handed from Molly Dry to Coach Winrow to Coach Taylor to myself, and it had a list of the routes with their names, like Pickle Hill, Kelly Town, Newtown, and it described all the routes that the guys run. And, they, and these guys still do that now. Of course, now we have online mappings, but did you have a, a favorite route that you would run around here? Well, probably my favorite one was running the, whatever the name of the hill is, going from here to Wellsboro. That ran that many, many times. <laughs> okay. On Route 6 then? The Mac, I'm, the, I'm sorry? The, on Route 6, the old Max yeah, Marathon yeah, route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I'm, I'm told I'm not supposed to encourage them to do that anymore. So we're not supposed to run on Route 6 anymore like because of that be big water trucks. <laughs> yeah. They no, still I, do it. They did it the other night. Yeah, right. <laughs> Then there's a golf course down here, Covington, is it? Yeah. Uh, Corey Creek? Corey Creek. Uh, yeah, we used to get down there and run quite a bit, too. Yeah. Did they chase you off? Well, at that time they didn't. They couldn't catch me. <laughs> 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 I was never I was never a fast runner. I'm not a sprinter. I would not want to say that I was. I just, I had endurance, and I worked on developing it more and more. I think a cardiovascular is way, way more important than speed. Well, I think the rest of the conference would argue against that, saying you were pretty good if you were all-conference for Mansfield in the first one. Well, and again, I don't good. even know what that means. How they made that <laughs> so, <laughs> so in the results that I found from the 1969 conference championships, the all-conference runners were the top 15. And at least, and I don't know how accurate it is, but in what I found, you were 14th in the 1969 Pennsylvania State conference championships which would have put you all conference and maybe my research isn't 100 percent accurate but from what i found you were the first from mansfield to do anything like that for cross country you know i, I worked <laughs> in the insurance business for years and we used to have a, a, a manager a sales manager yeah and he would say well how, how many points do you have in this how many points do you have in that you know what i told him i just play ball you keep score <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe the fact that your coach wasn't there with you, and you know, that's why he never knew what the score was. But <laughs> Well, I, would, I will tell you this. Based on the times that I've seen online, I would recruit you today, and I would give you a scholarship. So <laughs> I would have you on my team. You'd be running with our top guys today. So, I might come in number good. seven. <laughs> <laughs> you might. <laughs> no, I would love to run, and I, I can run, but I because of the impact on the artificial joints, I won't do that. Yeah. So what was your career after you left Mansfield? What did you, what did you, you worked, you worked in insurance sales? No, well, basically I got my master's degree at uh, Fredonia. I was, I uh, got a college teaching, uh, I went through the college teacher preparation program and uh, was on track to, I guess, uh, teach at college and I was encouraged to go on for my doctorate. I don't like publisher Perry's. I don't, I disagree with that. And uh, I just uh, kind of bounced around a little bit and found out that my, Forte was working with people, I enjoy people, and but when I want to get away from them, I can get away from them. But uh, I, I think our commitment in life is to be of service to other people. That's the only resource you have. You can have all the money in the world, but people are your best one. So to develop your um, cardiovascular and your endurance, what was your typical like days of training like while you're running for Mansfield? You'd have 10 mile days. Well, um, generally, uh, and my wife can probably verify most of this, I, I would try to put in between, when I was running marathons and stuff, 60 to 100, 60 to 100 miles a week. Uh, and, that's, and it didn't have to be fast. I never ran according to distance. I ran time because every day you feel different. There's some days when you run five miles, you feel terrific. Other days you run that five miles, you don't think you're going to make it. So I always talk to kids and I try to train, teach myself, okay, I'm going to run one hour today. That's it. 
and then maybe on a weekend I'll say I'm going to do a two hour run today because typically two hour is the threshold for when you burn up most of the sugar in your system. So. Science hasn't changed, kids. No. Yeah. I tell you guys all the time. So. Say what, please? I said the science hasn't changed. It's the same thing. Yeah. So we talk about it. We go two hours. They went two hours today. So. And, and I, I referred to this earlier. I have a book that's kind of my Bible on run, running. It's called The Von Aachen Method. And it's written by a guy. His name is Ernst Von Aachen, who trained long distance runners in Europe. And uh, to me, it's the Bible of long distance running. Find that book, yeah, I know. I'm looking, ben, I'm looking gonna up. find it right now. <laughs> Ben's gonna I'm, find I'm, it on I'll, Amazon. I'll message, here in I'll message the group. So the, 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 ben will find it in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> At most. I don't. I don't think they print it anymore. But if you find it, you, it's probably going to be expensive. I have two copies, but they're not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> they're priceless. Who is the most famous runner you ever met? Um, let me think a minute. Oh, he was from Florida. Barry. Barry Brown. Barry Brown. I ran with Barry. You knew Barry Brown? Yeah. Yeah, ran with Barry. I I used I also had an athletic attic store at one time. And they're out of business now, but yeah. But, I knew Barry Brown when I was in high school up in New York. Is that right? He's friends. You might know he was friends with Mark Mendel. Yeah. Who won the Toronto Marathon in yeah. 22. Yeah. Mark Mendel was my high school coach. No kidding. Yeah. And I've done the stockadeathon. I saw your certificate. Yeah. So yeah. I'm from Able Park, New York. Yeah. Yeah. So you knew it was a sad day with uh, Mary passed away. Yeah. There was a boy from uh, St. Mary's, Lee Foster, Lee Foster, another good runner in the area, and uh, he died. He was working in a ditch, and it collapsed on him. It was just, you know, so uh, strange. Was, a man who was depended on air couldn't get any air, you know. And uh, Barry Brown was on the. Empire State Games team that I was on. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. When they used to have the teams that would go to Syracuse. Yeah. I made the team as a high school scholastic, and wow. he was on the team, and I sure. think he won. He ran 29 minutes for 10k. So Barry Brown was a 29, 28 minute 10k runner, Olympic level runner. And he committed suicide. Probably. Yeah, and then uh, you probably all know or have heard of Terry Stanley. He went to school yep. here. Yep. Terry's a good friend of mine. He and I used to run together a lot, and. Uh, I think currently there was an article about him that he has run the most marathons for anybody his age or something of that nature. And he's wow. from here. From yeah. he went to, to Mansfield. Terry Stanley. Yeah. Gotta get he's, he's really good. <laughs> yeah. So you were kind of running. Um, the running boom was in the 1970s and 80s, and there's I was a lot running of people before that. Were, that. Well, you were. <laughs> <laughs> but there was. Um, what was it like running in that in the running boom when there was a lot more joggers out and a lot more people participating in the road races? You, you go to you go to races and there'd be a lot more people, but the majority of them uh, it was kind of a, a macho thing for them. You know, to participate in running and and uh, the majority of them weren't very good. You know, they. They uh, didn't train properly. Uh, most of them had too heavy a heel strike. They couldn't get up on their toes. Uh, a lot of them were uh, really had no core, no core strength. And that's one thing you really have to work on is you have to have great core strength to, to be a, th a distance runner because your weakest muscles are your abdominal muscles. You got to work on them all the time. And you know what? Uh, I, I do a workout three days a week right now, and I do 50 sit-ups. You know. That's part of my workout. And when I, I do all resistance work, not not impact work, I do all, all resistance work or work in the muscles, work in the muscles all the time. It's amazing to me that everything that you've said are things that we talk about here and still talk about. We do our core workouts and we do sit-ups and we do crunches and we do resistance work. All of those things that you were doing and I remember athletes at that time, you know, I was younger, but athletes weren't doing that. They were just going out and running. They weren't doing the, that kind of core work that you were talking about. Right. It wasn't really discussed in coaching until, you know, the late 90s. So you're 20 years ahead of your time, 30 years ahead of your time in terms of training. Well, you know, I've watched guys, you know, oh, they can bench press 300 pounds. Well, that's fine. I'll pick up 50, 40 times while you're lifting 300 pounds once, you know? <laughs> it's workload, yeah. Just yeah. repetition, repetition, repetition. Over and over. 
So I heard a story that you were doing um, stair repeats on the maple staircase. I used to run the stairs. I'd, I'd go out and run them for an hour. Just go up and down the stairs for an hour. You build your quads up that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you take off, what we as a team wanted to give you, since you were unaware of it as of a week ago, <laughs> was a very long overdue award, which was being the first all-conference runner for Mansfield. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. So this is for you. Thank you very we much. We all appreciate yeah. it very much. Thank you to all of you also. Uh, I want my wife to get a picture. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely, yeah. yeah. Before you go, we'll definitely get any pictures yeah. that you want because you've definitely earned it. <laughs> now, running is something you can do all your life, you know, really. And you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to go fast. You, you just can keep moving, keep doing things. And it's like running a marathon. You don't think about the finish. You just one foot ahead of the other. Just one foot ahead of the other. Don't think about the end. Just one foot ahead of the other. Keep going. And it works. It really does. If you think about the finishing and then you start thinking about how tired you are, you can't do that. If you're a dis distance runner, after the first mile, you're tired. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you work beyond that? That's up to you. Mr. Hanley, 